Hi everyone, my name is Emily Dash and I would like to welcome you all to this In Conversation event. Um, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're on today. Um, for me, that's the uh, Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. Um, and I want to acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. Um, this In Conversation event has been done in partnership with the Art Gallery of New South Wales and Accessible Arts. So we want to give a special thanks to um, Danielle Galotta at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. Um, so firstly, today we'll see a brief kind of introduction to the Archibald Prize and how it works. And then um, we will hear an audio description of each of the two pieces by the finalists interviewed. So that's Emily Crockford and Digby Webster being interviewed by David Capra and Neil Tompkins, respectively. Um, and while we've uh, pre-recorded the interviews, rather, um, I'm pleased to tell you that the artists are actually here and you can interact with them via the chat feature during and after the videos. So have fun with that. Um, I will just say that the Archibald Win and Silman Prizes are annual exhibitions eagerly anticipated by artists and audience alike. The Archibald Prize was first awarded in 1921 and is one of our most prestigious Arts Prizes, it's awarded to the best portrait painting and it's a who's who of Australian culture from politicians to celebrities, to sporting heroes and artists. Um, each year the trustees of the Art Gallery of New South Wales judge the Archibald um, Prize. Uh, and you can also vote for your favourite portrait when you visit the exhibition. Um, and I think that's all from me. Thanks very much. So here we are in the Archibald Prize. The Archibald Prize is judged by the Gallery's Board of Trustees and this year they managed to get a record number of entries, 1,068, down to just 55. A real feature of the Archibald Prize this year is diversity not just in terms of artists or faces in the exhibition, but also in ways of seeing the world and expressing that. Emily Crockford, self-portrait with Daddy in the Daisies, watching the field of planes. Acrylic on canvas, 198 by 84 centimetres. Bright pastel colours and intricate patterns animate this long vertical painting. The lower half of the painting is filled with a life-sized self-portrait of Emily surrounded by green grass and four large pink flowers. Emily has short bobbed blonde hair and small round glasses. She wears a long sleeved blue dress with a zigzag pattern and a huge red heart on the front with the letters DE heavily decorated with swirls and dots. Above her in the top half of the painting is the memory she has of her late father. A younger Emily as a small child sits on her father's shoulders 
with her hands clasped on his dark brown hair. She wears a bright red outfit while he is in a black jumper and dark blue, almost black pants. Surrounding them is a pink sky scattered with many tiny pink and white daisies and buzzing with multicolored model planes. Neil Tompkins and Digby Webster, Ernest Brothers, acrylic on canvas, 61 by 102 centimetres. Two head and shoulders portraits sit side by side in a simple inset frame. The portrait on the left is slightly smaller than its partner on the right, but enjoys similar tones of bright blue, peach toned flesh colours, dark and muddy browns, red, orange, white, green, grey and black. A head and shoulders shape is blocked in with a fleshy tone and all details sit on top of this shape, allowing the underpainting to show through. Neil is wearing a poncho with a high rounded v-neck collar in striped red, then green and white. A thick patch of brown under the collar meets with a bold striped v pattern painted across his shoulders and down towards the centre of the picture. The bold stripe is painted in repeated white, green and red diagonal lines. These stripes are loosely painted and run into each other to create a sometimes muddy effect to the V pattern. A halo of dark brown hair stops at his shoulders and blends with his neat brown beard and moustache. Neil's thick dark brown eyebrows hook around his circular grey outlined eyes. Bright white eyes and brown pupils look out to the viewer. A triangle also outlined in grey marks his nose. His mouth is a closed, flat, muted red line which is angled slightly to the right. The background of loose bright blue marks surrounds the sitter and is broken up with white and pale pink areas. The portrait on the right occupies almost all of the canvas with the top of Digby's head cut off. The artist has blocked in this head and shoulders shape using an orange brown and then painted Digby's facial features in an abstracted coloured shapes over the top to create detail. Digby has a dark brown fringe parted from the right, just off centre, and swept out to both sides of his face, above his ears. A small patch of muted grey on top of his ears. His thin eyebrows with short brown marks are slanted towards the top of his pale orange nose. Big brown eyes, outlined with white, then a thin red line and finished with a thick, muted green-blue all around highlights this feature. Digby's mouth is closed. The bottom orange beige lip is faintly crescent shaped, suggesting a smile and his top lip painted orange is flat but blends into short thin diagonal lines at the corners which reach outwards towards his chin. His face is a patchwork of gentle muted shapes and his expression is contemplative as he looks slightly downwards and away from the viewer. He wears an open neck black collared shirt with muted earthy brown shoulders. Hello, welcome. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are on Gadigal land of the Eora Nation. I'd like to acknowledge the First Peoples' rich connection to this location, its land and its waters. I'd also like to extend that acknowledgement to Indigenous people present here and those that may be watching this panel today. I'd like to introduce who will be joining us today on the Archibald Prizes In Conversation panel. First up, we have Emily Crockford. Emily has a long exhibition history and is well known for her public art commissions in places like the City of Sydney's uh, Creative Hoardings, the University of Technology Sydney and Barangaroo. Emily's Archibald portrait is called Daddy in the Daisies, watching the field of planes. Uh, Digby Webster has a career spanning 10 years. Digby's work works across film, dance and public art. He is also a founding member of Ruckus Ensemble, a contemporary performance group. 
Neil Tompkins has been working for over a decade, mainly in landscape oil painting. Neil has been involved in artist residencies in Peru, South America, Mexico and Tasmania. Both Neil and Digby collaborated on this painting behind me called Ernest Brothers. We have Gabrielle Mordi. Gabrielle is CEO and Artistic Director of Studio A. Studio A is a Sydney-based company focused on the development of artists with intellectual disabilities. And I'm David Capra. I have been painted in this year's Archibald by my art school friend Catherine Edney with my dog in, on my shoulders, um, Tina. And I'm also coordinator of Little Orange Studios located at Campbelltown Art Centre. Uh, it's a working studio for artists who identify as a person with disability. Well, Emily, congratulations on your beautiful painting behind us. What is it like to have so many people come and see your work everyone, at the Archibald? Everyone is going to watch it. <laughs> they sure are. I think there's been so many numbers that have come through. Has your family seen it? Yes, they love it so much. Mum's got a bit emotional, but yeah. we've got a bit holding hands and he'd be so proud of me. Yes, everyone's so proud of you. It's a, yeah, it's a big achievement. It really is, yeah. Are you thinking of um, entering next year? Oh, yes. <laughs> what have you been thinking? Thinking Can you give about us some landscape or the art teachers. So some yeah. people at Studio A, maybe? Yeah, all my friends. All your friends, yeah. yeah. And, um, and what would you, and what, what advice would you give other artists that are thinking of entering? Um, Thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you, well, Emily, you paint with a lot of I joy. Paint, I mean, painting joy in colours. Yeah. And you it work is, very hard. It inspires me, everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you do. My daddy was a, a painter, or he was the oil, oil paint he used for the landscapes. Yeah. And so this painting actually comes from a photograph that was taken when you were, how old were you? I think about three. When you were about three. Do you want to talk about that memory a little bit? Three and four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I paint my daddy and me when I was a little girl. And I, the, he loves planes and he loves daisies. And he loves easy. flowers. Yeah. And that's my selfie with some beautiful flowers oh, around me. I see. Like a, like a garden. So that's you self, today. Like a self portrait. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And your dad made plain models, is that right? He made the real models. Right. Did you ever see him do that? Did it inspire I used, you I used as an to, artist? I used to watch him. He makes planes. Yeah. yeah. Real stuff. Like he, buys online on his computer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He loves it. And what do you think he would say about this painting? He would be so happy for me to paint my father, mm. my special father in the whole world. I think he'd be smiling now. Yeah, it's brought yeah. so many smiles on people's faces. Faces. Yeah, I was watching people yeah. earlier in the week and everybody is really drawn to this to this painting. Yeah, yeah. you've done so well with my artwork. That's the a best one ever. It is. Yeah. yeah. I really look forward to seeing what it was you do so, it next was, year. It was so close. It was so close. I was holding this for oh, me yeah. for that, but the football done so well. <laughs> what was it like to get the news that you were in the prize? Oh, it was amazing. Uh, it was so big and fat. But it's to thinking of me and everyone was cheering me up to the upstairs watching telly. Yeah. It was amazing. Because <laughs> yeah. you also had quite an amazing thing happen just a few days ago. You were awarded the Emerging Australia Council National Arts and Disability Award. Yeah. What are you going to do with that money? Um, I want to save it especially. Yeah. I haven't thought about it yet, but yeah. Oh, that's, that'll be fun. Do you think you'll go somewhere or make art with it? I'm going to make artwork or art studio or yeah. come see my art studio. It would be nice. 
Yeah. So Emily, we have a friend in common, I believe. There's a painting mm. of me just behind this wall of me all in white, because that's my working attire. And on my shoulders is Tina, Tina the sausage dog. <laughs> and Tina was given to me by Rosie, um, Rosie Deacon, who is a friend of yours who you've yeah. done lots of work with. Yeah. You, um, what, does it, what does it mean to work with Rosie? Um, she's fun, classic. Um, I love her art studio. She loves painting, like different colours. Um, we get paints on which were scotches, really, of the 65. Soft sculptures of soft sculptures. sea creatures. Yeah, is sea that creatures. Right? Yeah. And then they will go on a line, and then someone will like to pay for the, to buy oh, the right. artworks. So yeah. it's like a shop, people can buy these. Yeah these works that you've been making together. Yeah. Yes. And they're like fish, I think fish. I've seen some. Yeah, fish yeah. and types of mermaids and stuff. And you are both mermaids, is that right? Yeah, it was funny that um, part, the mermaids, I was having a photo shoot. We had a few giggles. <laughs> um, me, me and Rosie try and put the costume on and then it got split. And oh, it, it makes me laugh. <laughs> And I had to put it on and I just had to take the thing off because it was so hot in it. I oh, had to take the costume off. And so you had this, you had all the, the artworks laid out and you're yeah. in mermaid costumes for yeah. a big photograph. Big photograph. I can't wait to see that. Yeah. And what do you think you've learnt from Rosie? Because you've worked so much with Rosie over the years. I did a portrait of her at. at Salon de Refuses. Salon de Refuses. Yeah. yeah, and I got there, but you know, I did an amazing that one. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's um, it was a bit tense with with Rosie because got it so much colourful. Right, I see. Yeah. yeah, I think it's really hard for an artist to see yeah. themselves yeah. in a painting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know that when I saw the painting of myself just behind the wall for the first time. It was yeah. it was a very strange experience. So, um, but I think you've done an amazing job of capturing Rosie's energy. Yeah. She's got yeah. a lot of energy, and there's lots of laughter. I know that she's also <laughs> your teacher when it comes to dance. Yeah. You do a few Zoom classes. We do dancing, and all my friends being cheeky, but they were having fun dancing. Yeah. And you've had such a big year, but you're about to have a little break. What yeah. are you looking forward to most to unwind? And um, see, we've got some friends in Terrigal. So we'll oh, yes. go up there sometimes on the weekends. We're going on New Year's Eve with them, it'll be nice. And maybe in the new year, I might do something with Guy's family, oh, with my fiancé. Okay, very yeah. exciting. Yeah. Enjoy the break, you deserve it. You've had an incredible year and congratulations again. Thank you. I might ask a few questions for Thank Gabrielle you. now. Um, what do you think shifts when something that attracts mainstream audiences like the Archibald uh, starts to recognise and feature the work of, say, artists that work in Studio A? Oh, it's, a, it's an inconceivable shift, really, that we've directly experienced through Emily's success in the Archibald. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> yes, um, <thank> <laughs> I think the, it really legitimizes the artwork that um, artists at Studio A create. And, um, you know, I can, I can bang on as much as, as much as I always do about how the, the quality of the work that um, the artists with intellectual disability that I work with make, mm. but I think that having the artwork selected in such, such an intense competition and positioned in the Art Gallery of New South Wales really mm. stamps this as high quality, serious artwork. Mm. And Studio A have just been inundated by congratulations and um, and some people who've known what I've known the the industry that I've worked in um, for a long time, I can see that now they really can see that, oh, you really work with serious artists. Yeah, it's funny that, isn't it's, it? Yeah. Take something like the Archibald to... To have it really taken yeah. seriously. And, and it's great because now I think more attention is being paid to the work that mm. artists like Emily are making. Certainly, <laughs> yeah. Can you give us an insight what it's like to run Studio A? 
extremely busy. Yeah. Um, I can't. I I feel just so privileged to be the director of Studio A. Um, it's it's the artists like Emily, the quality of the work they make. Emily and her colleagues at Studio A, they work so hard and it's just so energizing um, to, to be the kind of uh, the steward for their work to be um, appreciated mm. and for, for Emily to mm. get the recognition that she deserves. So I say it's a privilege and it's a, a constant joy. It's also, it's, it's hard work. Um, so many different aspects, you know, fundraising, um, exhibitions, exhibitions. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's also really busy, challenging work. Mm. <laughs> and and Studio A will go from the top. We aim for the top. Yeah. Studio yes. A aims for the top. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Emily always keeps me on my toes, you know. Yeah. I think she's really the boss. <laughs> and, and Emma. Emma. And Emma, that's yeah. right. Emma. Our colleague Emma. Yeah. Um, I call her Woody. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great to see perceptions of, of our artists changing. Mm. And so that's been, that's been a kind of obstacle, perceptions of yeah. the Studio, artists we work with. Studio A is my family, like yeah. sharing and kind and working the butts off. Working yeah. their butts off. Yeah, like they're very, very happy yeah. artworks because I love the colours. Yeah. Well, it means so much as an artist, doesn't it, to have support and to be in a space like a studio where you actually feel comfortable and safe and, and you actually grow yeah. and develop confidence. Yeah, confidence my family isn't be easy happy. to have. Yeah, my mm. family would be happy and thrilled and see it inspires me. And you're a real community at the studio, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, you, and I'm a great dancer. <laughs> and you're a great dancer. Yeah, There's you a can lot of sort dancing. of you can really sense I that could, community. And I love Gab and me doing dance together with Megan. Like, I like really doing um. We do sometimes do some dancing together at the yeah, studio. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that Megan's a timekeeper. She's a timekeeper. Yes. She's pretty strict. Yeah, <laughs> cheeky. And she's also taken part in a mural that's out front. Yeah. I want to get this right. It's called Love, Owls and Mermaids Singing in the Rainbow Pop. Yeah. Um, how did that title come to be? No. So the title is as communal as the work. And mm -hmm. the work is designed by seven Studio A artists. Yep. And so really is the title. So Megan Pelham, who is the dancer and timekeeper, as well as an artist at Studio A, her love owls feature through the mural. And uh, Catherine McGuinness's mermaid is in the mural as well. So love owls and mermaids. And then the notion that it is the work is, is singing, but it's a choir. Um, and it's a rainbow of colours and that it has that pop has that that kind of disco beat to it and so we played around with a number of titles and consulted with all the artists and the consensus in the end was the title that we went with so it was really a communal decision inspired by it, the artwork itself really named itself didn't it the mural the mural gave us the title, yes, a good <laughs> title. and I also wanted to ask what was it like to manage this year in particularly for both of you you worked a lot at home Emily I like come home sometimes I come out to studio a to do in case Gab or Emma wants me something to do in, in, in the studio a because like um, I get way back at um, more recently been More working recently. in the studio. Yeah. yeah, at home is very hard for the share because I lost, I can't get rid by reception, but I was working in the, working in the attic oh. while I just went out up there. I see, you need good reception for your Zoom yeah. dance classes. I know, because yeah. everyone's using it and I can't have I see. it. It's really hard for me to do painting. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I'm loving it, so. Yeah. Okay. I might do before portrait, something in my mind will come up, yeah. And Gab, how have you managed this year? Uh, well, I think for everyone this year has been a challenging year, but I mm. think being creative people gives us a particular superpower. So when we realised that we were not going to be able to all be making work in the studio as we always had, we had to think creatively and be quiet as 
the kind of buzzword now, be quite agile and support the artists to have the technology they needed to be able to work remotely. We had a very small number of artists who kept working at Studio A at our base studio, but a lot of the artists, including Emily, worked yeah. remotely and we all got onto Zoom and we um, managed to keep a real sense of community operating through Zoom. So we had things like communal dance classes, which Emily is talking about, that you did with with Rosie and we had staff come and work with artists in their homes so we really had a very um, a, quite a flexible dynamic program mm. in the way that we kept connected with the artists and keeping the sense of community keeping the sense of color and um, rhythm I guess that Studio A has was really important but yeah. I think it's been a success because Emily you painted this remotely working with Studio yeah. A remotely oh, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. And what's next for Emily after you have a break? Um, what do you what what do you got planned? Thinking what landscape in my Landscapes, life. okay. Because yeah. um, the the heart tells me I'm what thinking amazing. It will come up in my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Gab, what is happening with Studio A more broadly? So one of our, we're going to keep working with public art as we have been and something that we're particularly exploring is doing animation and doing digital work in the public art realm. So that's a, a real focus for 2021. Mm -hmm. And we have an exciting program next year which includes work at the Science Gallery in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working regionally in kicking the year off with a residency at Candos in preparation for the Cementa Festival. Oh, exciting. Collaboration yep. with Romance was born. So 2021 looks like a... Lots. A Lots. busy year, busy. yeah. We're we getting there. Yeah, We're getting there. I hope you enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you for chatting. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're a superstar. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. I think Rosie will like it. I think she will. Yeah. So, Neil and Digby, this is your collaborative work behind us called Ernest Brothers. Can you tell me about the title, how it came to be? Well, my middle name is Ernest, and his middle name is Ernest too. Is that so, right? hmm. so we got together and we. I'm not, I'm not a bit about him, he's not a bit about me, and I don't even know his middle name. And he told me his he middle name, and I, I said, oh, they say middle name's mine. So it's really complicated, but I'm ha it's a perfect title for this. So. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and it was, um, I think we, we threw around a few different titles yeah. um, when we were deciding, uh, you know, what to call it, and. Digby and I are just like on on the side working on projects call yep. each other the um the Ernest brothers so Digby yeah. suggested yeah that was a name and that was kind of what we were like yeah I think that yeah. you know this gives a little bit more information yeah. and which painting came first were they made at the same time in the same space in the studio together or how did it I did mine at my own studio yeah a photo of my tv and a photo of Neil I, I did it by myself in the studio, my own my studio, to capture his likeness. And I did his um, poncho. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did a few photo shoots here and there in a couple of sittings. Um, Dig, Digby, you put yours together super quick. Yeah, like, you, you, he was finished like months before, and I was really umming and ahhing. Mostly, I'm more focused on landscape painting. So, um, yeah, it was a bit, a bit more challenging for me. Um, so initially it. you weren't going to put it together as a series, as a diptych? Yeah, we wanted them to have a relationship. Okay. Um, and that's why they were the same size. But then when I kind of went to framing it, um, framing the work and having them actually together, they just, they were one work. I see, know? So yeah. uh, we kind of discussed that as an option and uh, we agreed that was a good idea, you know, yep. we were happy with that. And you've worked together quite a lot beforehand. Yeah. Uh, how did you both meet? Uh, I think I met you through... Um, how did we meet firstly? Is it Bono Dewey? Remember Bono? Yeah, through, um, through Leichhardt Council. Yeah, yeah. Um, some projects that I was working on. Uh, 
pa painting a few mural works in um, the Leichhardt Council area. And Digby came along, and so we met yeah. then, yeah. and then um, started working together mm. not long after that. Yep. I can't remember, what was the first project? You came and we painted that um, mural in oh, Newtown. Yeah, yeah, that one. I think that was the first collaborative that, first. that we did. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And was yeah. there a mural at the Beta Tip, I remember? Mm. The, in the laneway. In the laneway, OK. Yeah. And what was that painting on? Well, that painting, well, for me, I like Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah. And I right here to his painting of um, Starry Night. Yeah. In my mind, that oh, Starry Night for me is one of my most favorite ones of all of his. So I'll make my version of his painting, but on a wall. Right, I see. So it'd be, it's a very big style. Oh, and I right. thought I need some help. So I was that's when Neil came into it. Oh, okay. He helped me with it. So. Yeah, I, I guess um, uh, some of Digby's projects that have been larger scale, because of some of my experience with working larger scale, we've worked together on some of those, large, those larger projects for just scaling up the work and um, whatnot. And then um, we just really enjoy working together too. Yeah, so it's fine. just like nice and easy. And um, so yeah, it's always, it's always fun. What do you yeah, think you've okay. learnt about each other or about yourselves working together? Well, for me, I, I never do murals at all. I always do crayons and paintings. Yeah. But when I met Neil, I got inspired by his murals. And I said, I want to do one, 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 one day. And so I now do a couple of them. And for me, it's, the guys medium for me to mm. do some. So I like them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you've picked up that pretty naturally too. Yeah. Like it hasn't yeah. been like o overly challenging really for you to kind of scale up the yeah. work and work in that kind of, dip, you know, in that slightly different way. Yeah. Um, I think for me, working, working with Digby, like I just feel really inspired by how you approach mark making and um yeah. i find like w w with my practice like it's it, it, there is a, a very like direct and kind of um intuitive approach but i also can overthink quite a lot and sure. i like how um digby approaches his mark making and has there's a certain, there's a real confidence to um you know to how you operate with uh with with painting and with any kind of medium that you work with that for me, it reminds me to kind of uh, slow down and just have a little bit more like belief in in the in the in the movement, you know, in the in the movement of the hand. And sure, because um, you said that you mainly worked with landscapes. How did yeah. you approach this portrait? Was it from a photograph or a sketch um, or a sitting? Or but all, all of all, all of, of those. them. And then I sat down and I drew around 50 sketches because I wanted to approach the making of that work without necessarily looking at the image too much. And, and so I wanted my hand to be, um, to be able to just capture the lines and, and get my head around that. Mm. Um, so that's sort of how I approached uh, that painting. And I did, I think I did four of them and that was the one that I went with. I see, and what was it like to get the news that you were both in the Archibalds together? <laughs> Do you remember where you were when you found out? I, I don't know myself how well I was. Um, I mean, pretty exciting, pretty unexpected. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we, we called up the gallery prior to see if we could hand in a collaborative work. I see. Yeah. Um, so even just in that sense, there was really a very low expectation of anything kind of coming from uh, putting in a piece. We, we'd never applied for the Archibald before, either of us. Um, so, you know, it didn't seem like, I definitely wasn't expecting that email. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Like it's obviously a bit of a dream for both of us to have a work in New South Wales gallery, right? Mm. Yeah, so, um, and it's, yeah, it's been, the, the response has been just super positive and it's been great.
Yeah. And this year has been quite difficult for everyone. And, you know, being away from studios and, and being around supported supported spaces of, you know, of, of fellow artists and so forth. Digby, you were commissioned to create um, a series of videos or an artist book for the Art Gallery in New South Wales. Do yeah. you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, the gallery said to me, I, I can do something for them for the artist book. So I, um, I just become, um, not become, but I yeah. am now part of a archives for this gallery. Okay. And uh, I just found out in the archives, um, my my dad's some um, one of his uncles is an artist, but he's not around now. But he gave me he gave me his heart and spirit. So so that we found out he he's part of this gallery in the archives. So now I'm part of it in same thing but in that's in the same thing where he is now so he'll be mm. proud to see me doing this. So. Mm, certainly. Definitely. Yeah. I look forward to seeing those those books and videos. Hopefully they'll be on display soon yeah, here hopefully. so we can all see them. And do you have plans to, to continue working together, you think? Um, I say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's a it's a great little match. These, um, this, the, you can see a, like a zeal or an energy between you two. I think on the, in in these two paintings. Yeah. We yeah. um we sort of had we were talking about doing a project in the near future. Um, with should we talk a little bit about the the oh, landscapes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so um, Digby's been playing around with landscape painting, which he's yep. done over the years before. Yeah. And since we pretty early on from when we first met, I'd, I'd sort of really been drawn to his landscape painting. And as a yeah. landscape painter myself, like seeing something in, in, in that, I mean, in everything you do, but in those landscapes. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you, you know, been producing some landscape painting. So we were talking about uh, putting a, a show together of, of landscape works, um, yeah. which would probably be the first time that you've displayed. Have you displayed landscape before, maybe? maybe or? Uh, I do some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, we're we're looking at that and uh, um, not sure exactly the context in which we'll we'll show it. Um, right. The idea of it being in a regional space would be really nice. But, Any um, locations that you've been talking about? Um, I mean, like. I li I like the idea of showing it regionally. Not yeah. sure exactly where. Um, so we're kind of just open to seeing what happens and maybe these works traveling around uh, might be a good kind of opportunity to to check out a few spaces and chat to some people and see what happens sounds good um, yeah and anything that you're working on your own practices you want to share what are you up to digby in the studio uh, at the moment my well my studio is at, at the back of my mum and dad's house yeah no i live there by myself but I um, do crayons, really. That's up there by myself. But now, um, mum and dad's coming in because they do uh, big work, doing work for themselves. But our friend comes and help them. So, you see, um, now, um, I think, Every time I do my own artworks up there in the studio, I do like stress canvas, like the first canvas itself, but it's stress, mm -hmm. raw canvas. Uh, I just draw landscapes on them. Yeah, okay. So I do it with a friend who's another, another artist. She's got um, a place in somewhere in Asheville. Yep. They call themselves New Moon. Okay, that's exciting. Yeah, so they're both amazing people there. So, oh, that's exciting. What about you, Neil? And some textile stuff too, man. Yeah, Been I doing know. all the textile right. stuff, the jackets and yeah, stuff too, oh, which yeah, are pretty funky. Yeah. yeah, yeah, hoodies. Yeah, hoodies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> t-shirts. T-shirts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Neil, are you working on anything? Um, yeah, I'm. I'm 
getting ready for another show next year, do a solo show, I think probably around July. Um, but um, uh, I've started the works now and I'm just going to really slowly put them together and take my time um, putting them together. Uh, working, working in oils and just playing around with the medium and uh, putting that together. And then uh, there might be a few other projects on, but it'll depend on what's possible in terms of international travel. So mm. yeah, we'll just see what happens. And in the meantime, um, just yeah, continue collaborating with Digby and a few other like little little collaborative projects here and there. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank Cheers. you very much. Yeah, David. thanks. Thanks, Cheers. David. Thank you to our artists and thank you for joining us for this In Conversation panel. Right now, please stay with us. Uh, you'll be able to continue this conversation with Digby, Neil, Gabrielle and Emily. Uh, and you'll be able to continue this conversation on the chat feature in Zoom. Bye everyone. Bye.